Lord Jesus shall return again with his father's glory over the earth to reign. My friends, this Lord Jesus shall return again with his father's glory over the earth to reign. My friends, this Lord Jesus.
Before we formally start our program, please be informed that this webinar is being recorded, subject to the policies and guidelines on the Data Privacy Act of the Philippines. As part of our netiquette, kindly be reminded of the following. Please mute your microphone and video while the speaker is presenting. Ample time will be allotted for question and answer after the presentation. Questions will be entertained using video or the message chat or the options chat as guided by the session moderator. All attendees are advised to exercise caution in taking screenshots of the webinar and the presenter. Since this is an academic undertaking, observe proper attire in attending the webinar. Thank you and welcome to this webinar. Arriba! Shelter you from the rain, help you ease all the pain. Keep you safe in my heart, I'll never let you be harmed. And believe your sign, I'll be there. I'll always be there.
You're more than all the birds and lilies of the earth. More than anything I've known and everything I own. Ooh, I'll be there when you call. Got you each time you fall. I'll be your light in the dark. Hold you close to my heart. If my people will humble themselves, humble themselves and pray, if they seek my face and humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and forgive them. to 
place where you can go anytime when you feel so low it's a place where you can go when all your tears won't flow will you please take me inside it's cold outside and receive me so tight it's not an ordinary place of mine it's not an ordinary place to find it's not home those words and caring love they felt within my heart those eyes who watch my side are guiding me all night But you know when I'm feeling down I close my eyes And you give me those warm hugs Are you alright? It's not It's not an ordinary place to find It's not an ordinary place of love Is everybody home?
will sing of your love, O oh Lord, in the sight of all the angels. I will give you thanks, O oh Lord. Praises, Lord, in the sight of all the angels. I will sing of your love, O Lord, in the sight of all the angels. In your kindness and your truth, you have lifted up your name. When I at me. You have built this revenue. I will sing of your praises, Lord, in the sight of all the angels. I will sing of your love, O oh Lord, in the sight of all the angels. Kings of earth will thank you, Lord. Sing of your love, O Lord, in the sight of all the angels. I will sing of your praise, Lord, in the sight of all the angels. I will sing of your love, O Lord, in the sight of all the angels. I will sing your praises, Lord, and I will worship you. I will sing your love. Ah. 
Minamahal na kapatid sa pananampalataya, tayo po ay magpuri at magpasalamat sa Diyos sa napakagandang araw na ito. Magpasalamat din po tayo sa Kanya dahil tinipon niya tayo, pinagsama-sama niya tayo bilang isang sambayanan na nagpapahayag ng mga magagandang bagay na ginawa ng Diyos sa salit-saling lahi. Yan ang diwa ng palalangin ng mahal na ina. sa iyong biling sa araw-araw na paglusong ko sa buhay ikaw lang ang saksit ng isang pantay dayuhin man ako ng lungkot at hirap ang ulang kong lagi lingap mo Salamat Maria sa iyong pagbisan sa bawat hapis, luwalhati at tuwa namin. Salamat sa pag-ibig at sa bawat tanangin. Salamat sa iyo sa mga pagdamay mo. Kami patuloy Magmamahal sa'yo Pero napakaganda po na sa pagpapasinaya ng napakayaman na misyon misyon ng Kolehyo de San Juan de Letran dumadalaw muli sa kanyang orihinal na tahanan, walang iba kundi intramuros, ang Nuestra Senyora del Santísimo Rosario, La Naval de Manila.
na unang nanirahan dito sa Intramuros sa unang Santo Domingo Church. At dahil nga po sa gera, siya ay inilikas. Salamat naman at siya ay inilikas sa UST hanggang siya ay nailuklo sa kanyang pangkasalukuyang tahanan sa shrine ng Santo Domingo sa Quezon City. Subalit, dito siya sa Intramuros unang nanirahan. At mula nung Second World War, eto siya, dumadalaw muli. Welcome home, Mama Mary. Welcome home.
Polster uh, Social Weather Station reports report close to half there was of the 27 uh, points. COVID-19 infections in the Philippines spiked to over 209,000. The Middle the East, the city, the city under siege, the city under ISIS rule, over 71,000. Lord Jesus Christ, your love for St. Dominic inspires us now to implore your help and seek your intercession for all the Dominicans in the Philippines and the whole world. In confidence, we ask you to strengthen them with the virtues of chastity, poverty, and obedience that they may live with one mind and heart. Instruct them in holiness with your goodness and the mysteries of the Holy Rosary, and sanctify them in truth and love through the Holy Eucharist and penance. Give them the grace of faith, sweet hope in the midst of life's bitterness, burning charity, and the precious gift of final perseverance. Lead to this order men and women willing to live and preach the truth of the gospel after the example of Saint Dominic, and mercifully grant that we may all be moved with a zeal for your glory in saving souls and become partakers of your crown in heaven. Amen. Saint Dominic de Guzman, pray for us.
land, domestic air and domestic sea travel to and from Metro Manila shall be suspended beginning 15, 2020, March, March 15, 2020, and to end on April 14, 2020. Dahil wala kami pira, wala kami pambili bigas. Mahirap eh. Mahirap pag mahirap. Walang pagkukunan. Ang kailangan, pagkain. Ako si Julian Christopher C. Morada OP, ang bagong coordinator ng kadaupan ngayong taon ng pandemya. Masasabi ko na hindi pa mo nagsimula ang pandemyang ito, ang kadaupan na ang frontliner ng Santo Domingo sa pagtulong sa mga nangangailangan. sa lahat. Ako po si Monique Day Solis. Nag-aaral po ako sa National Teachers College at kumukuha ng course ng BSHM at sa ngayon ay nasa third year. Isa po ako sa kadaupang scholar. Ako po si Cherry Rivera. Bata pa na magsimula ako sa kadaupang. 1997 na magsimula ako mag-join sa grupo. Sa Makatawid, 24 years na akong kadaupa. Ang laking tulong na naibigay sa akin ng kadaupa ng simula ng nandito. Scholar ako. Sa tatlong taong ko dito, natulungan ng aking pag-aaral, lalo na sa tuition at pang gusto sa araw-araw. Pag-join ako sa kadaupa, marami akong narealize. Nakita ko kung ano ang purpose ko sa buhay. Bilang isang rin, naintindihan ko kung ano nga ba ang ibig sabihin ng salitang tulong. Salamat kadaupan! Salamat kadaupan! Ang isang kadaupan member ay hindi lamang frontliner. Ang mga frontliner ang unang sumasabak sa digmaan. Higit pa riyan, ang isang kadaupan member ay isa ring faithliner. Bakit? Dahil sa labang ito, hindi lang namin dala ang aming mga sarili. Dala rin namin ang Diyos. Sa pagtulong namin sa kapwa, siya ay aming kasama. Kaya ang isang kadaupan member ay hindi lamang frontliner, siya rin ay isang faithliner. Sa laban ng pandemyang ito, hindi namin kaya ng kami lamang. Sana ay kasama namin kayo sa pagtulong sa mga nangangailangan. Kaya ngayon po ay kumakato kami sa inyong mga puso na sana ay matulungan niyo ang kadaupan upang maipagpatuloy pa ang kanyang misyon na pagtulong sa mga nangangailangan at mga nahihirapan. Maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat at naway pagpalain kayo ng Panginoon. Hello mga mukha-others, ako po si Brother Nico Paulo Moron Upi, 
ang inyong Coordinator General sa Mukhaad. Masiglang ugnayan ng mga kabataang hinuhubog sa anyo ng anak ng Diyos. Masiglang ugnayan. Dito po sa Mukhaad, priority po ng aming apostolate ang mga kabataan, kung saan we build youthful relationship and commitment with others. At dito rin po sa Mukhaad, inuhubog namin ang mga kabataan upang maging anyo ni Kristo sa ibang tao. To be the face of Christ to others sa pamamagitan ng mga sessions and activities that will empower them na maging mabuting tagasunod ni Kristo. Subalit, hindi maiiwasan ang mga challenges na dulot ng virus at pandemic na siyang nakaaapekto sa pagtupad ng aming mga plano para sa taong ito. But we are hopeful na sa tulong nyo at ng ating Panginoon, walang virus o pandemic na makahahadlang at makapipigil sa amin sa paghubog sa ating mga kabataan. Sabi nga sa aming team ngayong taon, Mukhaad Viral, Spreading the Good News, Bridging Distances. No social distancing, no pandemic, no virus can hinder us to be the face of Christ to others. Kaya mga mukha others, batch 31, walang iwanan. Before we formally start our program, please be informed that this webinar is being recorded, subject to the policies and guidelines on the Data Privacy Act of the Philippines. As part of our netiquette, kindly be reminded of the following. Please mute your microphone and video while the speaker is presenting. Ample time will be allotted for question and answer after the presentation. Questions will be entertained using video or the message chat or the options chat as guided by the session moderator. All attendees are advised to exercise caution in taking screenshots of the webinar and the presenter. Since this is an academic undertaking, observe proper attire in attending the webinar. Thank you and welcome to this webinar. Arriba! Let us pray. The Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, our Creator, Redeemer, Paraclete, in prayer, we lift up our praise, our blessing, our preaching. 800 years ago, you called Saint Dominic to enter into eternal life and to join you at the table in the heaven. As we celebrate this jubilee, Feed us and fill us with grace, so that we may realize our mission of preaching for the salvation of souls. Help us nourish your people with your truth, your mercy, and your love, until the promised day when we all are all united with the blessed. We ask this as one Dominican family, through the pleas of Mary, the name of Jesus. 
Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mga kababayan, ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. A blessed day to all of us. Bonjour, guten tag, buenas tardes, ciao buitoy, salamat malam, isang mapagpalang araw po sa ating lahat. Welcome to the Urbi et Orbi, Dominican preaching to the city and to the world in the time of pandemic. I am Brother Vince Stanley Inigo Opi, a student brother of the Institute of Preaching in the Philippines. I will be your master of ceremonies for this three-day event. For this program, we also acknowledge the presence of our institutions from the different parts of the world. The Aquinas Institute of Theology in St. Louis, Missouri, USA. The Stiftung Institute for Pastoral Homiletic in Germany. Coleo de San Juan de Letran in Tramuros, Manila. And Institute of Preaching, Quezon City, Philippines. Preach the word, be in season or out of season. The grace and task of preaching is entrusted eminently to the Dominican family, and it is ever rich as we face the needs of the times. Challenged by this global crisis of COVID-19, we are assured that nothing can stop us because the Holy Spirit is with us to live our motto, Laudare, Benedicere. Predicare. To begin our program, let us call on Brother Philemon I. De La Cruz Jr. O.P., Prior Provincial of the Dominican Province of the Philippines, to give us his welcome remarks. Thank you very much, uh, Brother Vince. Uh, Reverend brothers and sisters in Christ, it is an honor and joy to welcome you to our gathering, the Second International Colloquium on Dominican preaching with the theme, Urbi et Orbi, Dominican preaching to the city and to the whole world in time of pandemic. To highlight the international character of this gathering, allow me to greet our participants from different time zones. Good morning for those in the US. Good afternoon for those in Europe. Good evening from us here in the Philippines. Good day and mabuhay to everyone, as I could not mention all the time zones. From the outset, there are three things that I would like to point out in this gathering. First, that our virtual gathering reminds us of the challenge of this pandemic. If preaching is our business, we cannot say business as usual. This pandemic has disrupted the different facets of our lives, including preaching. Second is the gift and consolation of technology, particularly communication technology. We can find consolation in the fact 
that we can still gather, though virtually. In another occasion, I shared that in virtual gatherings like this of the Dominican family, I imagine our Father St. Dominic being with us. And we can name this gathering at our respective computer table with Dominic. Actually, we need not imagine. In this gathering, the Master of the Order, the successor of St. Dominic, Brother Gerard Timoner III, will be joining us, or perhaps he's already with us, of course, before his computer table too. And third, I was informed yesterday by Brother Clarence Marquez, the convener of this colloquium, of the number of registrants and the overwhelming response and interests shown by our brothers and sisters, by you, by all of us who are gathered here. What does this tell us? What does it mean? I think this may serve as indication and a very good cue to the preaching network consisting of the Institute of Preaching, Philippines, Aquinas Institute of Theology, Missouri, US, and the Institute of Pastoral Homiletics in Germany, that there is a great interest in preaching as a conversation topic across cultures, contexts, and time zones. In other words, we want to hear and learn from each other and be inspired by each other. How we wish we can really host all of you in person here in the Philippines. I'm sure it will be a richer experience. But for now, let these virtual gatherings prepare the way for future personal encounters. Once again, welcome and may God bless our gathering. Thank you so much, Father De La Cruz, for the warm welcome. You are right. Uh, it could have been a very memorable event if all of our participants are here in the Philippines to feel our hospitality. Nevertheless, having you here on Zoom and Facebook Live is also a rewarding experience for all of us. Moving on, our keynote speaker shall be introduced. Our keynote speaker hails from Daet Camarines Norte, Philippines. Only called by the brethren of the Philippine province as Brother Jerk, he has shared wonders of religious life as an exemplary preacher. He made his first profession on May 13, 1989, and was ordained to the priesthood on May 14, 1995. He completed his philosophical studies in the Dominican studio and his theological studies in the Royal and Pontifical University of Santo Tomas in España, Manila. He earned additional degrees in sacred theology and intercultural theology at the Catholic University of Nijmegen in 2004. He served as the prior provincial of the Dominican province of the Philippines from 2012 to 2016. And during those years in 2014, he was appointed by Pope Francis to be a member of the International Theological Commission. After his term as prior provincial, he was appointed Socius of the Master of the Order for Asia Pacific. His infectious smile and the humble personality reflect the essence of what our Holy Father Dominic uh, calls his sons to become, joyful preachers. His batchmates in profession shed stories that he truly is an intellectual with a heart and he is worth imitating both by the young and the old. He must have been remarkable for such traits during the general chapter held in Bien Hoa, Vietnam in 2019, thus leading to his election as the 88th Master of the Order. Dear sisters and brothers, let us welcome our Master of the Order, Reverend Father Gerard Francisco P. Timoner III O.P. Dear brothers and sisters, dear friends, 
I am grateful to the Dominican Preaching Network, a community of schools of preaching, the Aquinas Institute of Theology in the United States of America, the Institute for Pastoral Homiletic in Germany, and the Institute of Preaching in the Philippines for organizing this colloquium with a the theme, Urbi et Orbi, Dominican preaching to the city and to the world in a time of pandemic. I am also thankful to our dear brothers Clarence, Gregory, and Andreas for animating this colloquium and for keeping this regional intercontinental colloquium going. How do we preach in a time of pandemic? How do we preach God's closeness to us while keeping our safe distance from one another? How do we preach God's nearness to people in isolation? How do we preach hope in a time of despair? In many homes and communities, including some of our very own convents and homes, we have seats and spaces now empty, reminding us of loved ones we have lost in these last two years. How do we preach the joy of the gospel in the midst of loss? Surely, there are manifold ways of preaching in these trying times. But from what I have read, heard, and seen, I wish to say that you, you dear brothers and sisters, are a sign of hope for the church and the human family, as you strove to feed the hungers, the many hungers intensified by the pandemic. Hunger for the Eucharist and sacraments, hunger for solidarity and compassion, hunger for food and drink. There are members of the Dominican family who raised funds for the needs of the sick and those who take care of the sick. There are friars, and I know some friars who have braved the contamination of ministering to the sick while observing necessary precautions in order to prevent viral transmission within their communities. Our brothers from all over the world have published theological and biblical reflections on the different facets of the pandemic. Liturgy guides for the celebration of the Paschal Triduum at home, guidelines for a safe and worthy celebration of the sacraments, and many more. We recall what our brother Timothy Radcliffe wrote in The Wellspring of Hope. To study is in itself an act of hope since it expresses our confidence that there is a meaning to our lives and the suffering of our people. And this meaning comes to us as a gift, a word of hope, promising life. The intellectual mission of the order and its mission to preach veritas is an important antidote to another pernicious pandemic, fake news and half-truths which are, in fact, half-lies. There are also brothers and sisters who offered words of encouragement and hope through phone counseling. Most of the brothers and sisters preached and prayed with the people through various digital initiatives. We even have a friar scientist who is developing with his team a low-cost and shelf-stable vaccine called Dominivax, with reference to Dominus, the Lord, and of course to Dominic, our Holy Founder. Indeed, moments of crisis can become occasions of grace and moments of creativity. But COVID-19 
is not the only pandemic afflicting our world today. The church, the mystical body of Christ, is wounded by divisions and various forms of pandemics. How do we preach God's friendship at a time when we hear people fomenting fractures and divisions within the church? How do we preach in a time of the pernicious pandemics of indifference, clericalism, divisions, fake news, hopelessness in our times? I invite you, dear brothers and sisters, to look at Dominic, our holy founder, whose Dies Natalis we are celebrating this year, the eighth centenary of his birth into eternal life. Saint Dominic, preacher of grace, predicator gratiae. I also invite you to read and ponder on the beautiful letter of Pope Francis to the order with the same title, which we received, which the order received last May 24, this year, the day of the translation of Saint Dominic. And so we ask ourselves, what does Saint Dominic have to say to us, to the church and to the world, as we confront these other forms of pandemic? In a time that is marked by indifference, especially indifference towards the suffering other, Dominic preached misericordia veritatis, the mercy of truth. We recall that while he was a student at Palencia, Dominic stood on the frontier between life and death. He was moved with compassion for those who were suffering and dying during a severe famine. So he sold his precious books, but he did not stop at selling those books and just giving the money to those who are hungry. According to the Libellus, Dominic established a center for almsgiving where the people could be fed. His exemplary kindness inspired others to do the same. And so with a compassionate heart, Dominic preached misericordia veritatis, the mercy of truth perfectly manifested in Christ our Lord, misericordia vultus, the face of the Father's mercy. Mercy is love that seeks to alleviate the pain of the other. As Pope Benedict once reminded us, the greatest act of charity is evangelization. And he said, there is no action more beneficial and therefore more charitable towards one's neighbor than to break the bread of the Word of God to share with him the good news of the gospel, to introduce him to a relationship with God. At a time when clericalism seemed to obscure the evangelical meaning of diaconia as imitation of Jesus who came to serve and not to be served, Dominic grounded the diaconia of preaching on fraternal communion or sororal communion. The charism of preaching he received propelled Dominic to remind the church of her universal mission to preach the gospel. That preaching is a mission not of a few chosen ones but of all the members of the church. It is a charism shared by all the members of the Dominican family, friars, meaning clerics and cooperator brothers, nuns, apostolic sisters, members of the priestly fraternity and lay Dominicans, 
all the states of life in the church. Thus, Dominic, who preached verbis et exemplo, opened the possibility for the manifold life and witness of disciple missionaries and their varied works, such as the writings of Catherine of Siena, the paintings, the works of arts of Fra Angelico, the loving service to others of Rosa de Lima, Juan Macias, Margaret of the city of Castello, our newest saint, Pier Giorgio Frassati, and so many others. All of these are considered as important forms of preaching the gospel. We know of the expression of one wise cooperator brother, we are not an order of homilists, but an order of preachers. At a time when the church, the body of Christ, was wounded by divisions and discord, Dominic envisioned a communitarian form of government that promotes inclusion and participation in discernment and decision-making. Chapters on various levels provide space for conversing with brothers and confronting the challenges which they face, for seeking consensus on divisive matters, for discerning the best possible ways to serve the mission of the order at a particular moment and place. And more importantly, for mutual listening and learning as brothers, as sisters. Pope Francis affirmed in his letter to the order that our communal form of government, that this synodal process of our form of government enable the order to adapt its life and mission to changing historical context while maintaining fraternal communion. At a time when error and fake news sowed confusion and misled many, Dominic sent his brothers to the emerging universities in Europe. He knew the importance of sound and solid theological formation that is based on scriptures and attentive to questions posed by the times. Such conviction has led a succeeding generation of friars to the frontier where faith meets reason as companions on the path to truth. Our brothers Thomas Aquinas and Albert the Great stood on such a frontier and found confidence in their harmony and produced an abundant harvest for the philosophical and theological heritage of the church. The intellectual mission of the order and its mission to preach veritas is an important antidote to the pernicious pandemic we named earlier, fake news. In these trying times, when people seem to be lost in despair, Dominic offers us Spem Miram, a wonderful hope. Our song of hope commemorates the moment 800 years ago when Dominic passed from this world, a time when the brothers had tears in their eyes, ospem miram, quam de disti mortis, ora te flentibus. But Dominic stirred hope in their hearts because he promised to continue to be helpful to the brothers and sisters. He vowed to intercede for us and therefore to abide with us by his prayers. But this is just one side of the story. The presence 
of the praying brothers at the hour of Dominic's death must have also given Dominic hope at that final moment of human finitude. Dominic was not alone. The presence of the brothers and Dominic's promised presence beyond death gave them hope and consolation. Ultimately, hope is grounded on the certainty that God will never abandon us. Hope is the assurance that God abides in the mysteries of joy, sorrow, glory, and light of our lives. As St. Paul wrote in his letter to the Colossians, hope is Christ in us. Hope is God's abiding presence in us. In the times of joy and sorrow, glory and light in these mysteries, there is always hope because Christ abides in us. So dear brothers and sisters, I hope we were able to gain some insights on how to preach in our trying times, in this time of different pandemics afflicting our world, afflicting the church, and perhaps afflicting our very own communities. I close this reflection with a prayer. O Lord, our God, creator of the world, giver of life, 800 years ago it pleased you to receive Saint Dominic into eternity and to establish the holy preaching all over the world. O Spem Miram, you, O Lord, are the wonderful hope promised by Dominic as our constant companion in the holy endeavor of spreading and growing your word over lands, across the sea, beyond the horizons of our vision. As we celebrate the jubilee of the Dies Natalis of St. Dominic into eternal life, feed us and fill us with a double portion of the Spirit so that we may experience a new Pentecost, a renewed proclamation of the mighty acts of God and rekindled commitment to our mission for the salvation of souls. Bless our brothers and sisters and the entire Dominican family with health, happiness, and holiness. Lead them to ever serve your people. Gather them all to yourself in praise and thanks eternal through Mary's plea. In Jesus' name, amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you, dear brothers and sisters, for joining this colloquium and for your patience. God bless you. Thank you, Father Master Timoner. You always awe us with your deep insights. And on a personal note, I will do my best to remember what you have said about the humanity's search for meaning, which comes as a gift, and the word of hope that promises life. Truly, moments of crisis become moments of grace. Hopefully, the audience are energized to set their foot anywhere and become preachers of grace who preach the mercy of truth, just like our Holy Father, Dominic.
right now we know that we miss one another and we are virtual but before we move to our next video presentation may we call on our brothers and sisters from the different parts of the world to open their cameras and wave hi so we will call each region okay we call those from north america Good day to all, good day. From South America. Hey, greet one another, dear sisters and brothers. How about those from Europe? Can we spotlight uh, some of them? Hey, it's, uh, sun's still up, sun is still up. Hello, sister. I can see her. Hey, hello, hello, brother. Now, those from the different countries from the Asia and the Pacific. Oh, we have uh, plenty of uh, members in the Dominican family. We are so glad that we're able to see your beautiful faces and radiating smiles, dear sisters and brothers. So uh, please stay tuned for, and watch this short film entitled A Bishop's First Confession. Good morning, Father. Good morning. This is my first confession. That's wonderful. And how old are you? I'm the age of reason and a half. Hmm. So you're seven. And a half. My mom says I'm old enough to know right from wrong now. So I'm supposed to tell you my sins before I receive my first communion. Very good. So what are your sins? You don't sound like Father Joe. He's not feeling very well today, so I'm taking his place. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Tell him I hope You are getting ready to tell me about your sins. Oh, okay. I sometimes hit my brother, but only when he hits me first. And I don't always speak up when I should. And I haven't listened to my mom 541 times. You don't really have to count. At least not that high. It was a joke. Right. So tell me about speaking up when you shouldn't. No, I said sometimes I should speak up, but I don't. Oh, for example? For example, when my classmate Zach's getting bullied, or the bishop. The bishop? Well, my mom says some priests have hurt a lot of children, but the last bishop didn't speak up. You don't have to worry. Not many people are getting hurt anymore. Are you sure? Maybe some people are afraid to say they've been hurt. Just one person getting hurt shouldn't happen. Okay, but what does this have to do with you not speaking up? Well, I guess because people are saying bad things about the bishop we have now. People? My mom. And what does she say? That he isn't doing everything he can. I can assure you he is. Yeah, probably. Just pray for him. I do, but it seems like I could do more for him. I could speak up and tell him me and my mom can help him. Your mom and you could help me, him? What could you do? I don't know, but the bishops think they have to do all this by themselves. That's not fair to them. We can give them ideas. We can help them decide what to do. We can be their friends. We can help them keep their promises. That's very thoughtful of you. But why don't you just focus on your First Communion right now? But isn't that what First Communion is all about? Being friends with Jesus and each other? Do you know what responsibility is? Of course. My mom says I'm responsible. I clean my room. I do my homework. Well, it is not your 
responsibility to have to worry about these things. It's the bishops. But why is it just the bishops' responsibility? That's just the way it is. Plus, we, plus they know about how certain things in the church work. And how God works? That's right. But that's why I go to Catholic school. So I'll know how God works too, and how the church works. I'm a good student. I'm sure you are. But there's even so much that the bishops can do. They can't make each other do the right things. That's up to the Pope. Why? Who made him have to be responsible for all our problems? God did. And those men in the red hat? Those red hats were given to them by God. And the Pope, right? Okay. You win. And you say you're only seven. And a half. Haven't you been listening? I will listen better in the future. You but now need to for your listen now. I need to make sure no one gets hurt anymore. I need to help the bishop. What if he doesn't want, need your help? I don't know. I'm only seven. And a half. Maybe we'll have one of those parade protest things down, down Main Street. We could even have it at school and at the church. It could be like one of those communion that would processions. That be very inappropriate. I guess you know what inappropriate means. It's when grown-ups don't like something. And for good reason. And, and what good would that kind of behavior bring? And it might even keep you from receiving well, your first communion. Even if the bishop doesn't care, it'll make other people care. Plus, Megan's mom is a retorter. You mean reporter. That's what I said. Aren't you listening yet? Plus, my mom lets me put money in the baskets on Sundays. And all my friends get to do it, too. We'll put money in the baskets for poor people on Sundays. Okay, that might get the bishop's attention but it would also cause a lot of division. Do you know? Yes, I know what division means. I already know my multiplication and division tables. That's not what I meant. I was just seeing if you were listening yet. Hey, I have another idea. Of course you do. If the bishop doesn't let me help him, what if we all get to pick our own bishop? Are you through yet? I think I'm just starting. Well, I'm sure there's other people out there waiting to see me. So, for your penance, I'd like you to write an anonymous letter to the bishop, assuring him of your prayers. And tell him my idea? Sure, but just don't sign the letter. I know what I'm not anonymous means, but why? Well, I know the bishop pretty well. If I were to show him a letter from a seven-year-old girl, a seven-and-a-half-year-old girl, then in fact, I would then know who it was that went to this anonymous confession. Well, my name is Sophia, so I know I won't mind if I sign the letter. Okay. So, Sophia, do you know where you would send this letter? I'll figure it out. I'm sure you will. Because as I've discovered, you're definitely of the age of reason and a half. So now you can say your act of contrition. Oh my God, I'm hardly sorry. Actually, writing a letter isn't like real help. He'll just be alone in his office with my letter. I should be by his side. Mr. Excellency, should I, should me and my mom set up an appointment with, with you? How did you know I'm the... Thursday after school would be good for us at four. Sure. I'll look forward to it. Could you find our house? Your house? Just click your heels three times, or you could ask the school secretary for my address. I'm Sophia Morales, don't forget that. How could I forget? Now, could we finish that act of contrition? Oh my god, I'm hardly sorry. In choosing to do wrong and failing to do good, I have sinned against you, whom I should love above all things. I, I firmly intend with, with your help, help to, to do penance, in to sin no more, more and to, to avoid, avoid whatever, whatever leads me to, to sin. sin.
All right. That is such an entertaining video. <laughs> but stay tuned for another video presentation entitled Wake. Out of my head! What's on your head, Irene? Without me, you are nothing. there Irene loves shaking people's hands and giving high fives in fact she's lived her life with her hands in several places But chief of this is her pension for giving high fives and shaking people's hands. They say I can't shake hands or give high fives. They say I, I have to keep my hands to myself. They say... Who goes there? Who are you and what do you want from me?
What's that? It's my phone. I have a phone? How? From where? I haven't seen a phone before. What am I saying? What are you saying? I had no idea the lockdown was done. There was a lockdown? Of course there was a lockdown. My phone? It's been with me. I had no idea I had a phone. Okay, I've not been using it for a while now. I had no idea where it was. Oh, I had a phone! What is lockdown? There's no lockdown. I said I just found my phone. I never knew I had a phone. Groceries? I don't have. I don't feel like going anywhere. They want to kill me. They want me dead. They want to kill me. I'm the only one in lockdown. I was the only one still in lockdown. They want to kill me. They want me dead. They killed those people in the accident. Irene is awake.
Okay, let's give a warm round of applause to those inspiring and mind-blowing <laughs> videos. And we also acknowledge our brothers and sisters from Africa, especially those who produce the video. And we noticed that Sophia and Irene were the stars of tonight's show. Uh, for this evening, we're still waiting for the master of the order and Father Scott. Maybe we can uh, call on some of our participants who might want to give a sh short sharing of what uh, impacted them while watching the video. Is there anyone here? You may use the raise hand button of Zoom while uh, while watch uh, wa when you were watching. What what is it that uh, uh, caught your attention most? How about those from Africa? Maybe you can share to us. Uh, how did how were you able to come up with the video? Or those from I think that's in the United States where Sophia is uh, uh, based. Anyone from our audience? First, we acknowledge the presence of our brothers and sisters who have also sent their greetings in our Zoom chat box. So like from Sister Roberta Popara OP, greetings from Chicago, Illinois, USA with gratitude for all those who put this event together for us. We also thank you for coming to this event. We also have Sister Vanessa Alanano OP, who greets us. Good morning, buenas tardes. Okay, so that's good morning and good afternoon and good evening to everyone. We also have from Father Brendan Curran OP, Blessings to all from St. Martin de Porres House, St. Albert the Great Province, Friars, Chicago area, USA. We also have greetings from Mariana Huring. Uh, greetings from the sisters in Queen of the Rosary Mother House in Amityville, New York, where Sister Margaret is based. Okay, so some of us have, uh, are asking if there is going to be a scheduled uh, sharing with the participants. Uh, we're actually uh, waiting. It's a sharing with the keynote speaker, if uh, I may uh, respond to that. But due to our uh, huge population in the Zoom meeting room, it might take us some time to group together. But again, I was, I was asking uh, our participants a while ago, maybe you would like to have a short sharing about the videos that you watch. Okay, so we have from uh, Kathleen Fitz Simons. I hope you, I pronounce your name right. Greetings from Ireland. I was very much pleased because I am a Dominican sister from Ireland, works with asylum seekers from many countries have blessed us with their presence. Yes, thank you so much, sister. And Father Frederick Opie, the video produced in Nigeria, he said, with the media team of the province of St. Joseph in Nigeria and Ghana. I'll get the director to comment when I send him the link. Okay, so Father Frederick, uh, do you know the director personally? And I hope that you could also introduce him to us. Okay, someone raised hand. We have, I'm sorry, where's the, where's the name? Diane, Diana Valenzuela. Hello, can you please open your cam? Hello, ma'am. Hello, sister. <laughs> there I am. Good morning. Uh, the videos, I was surprised and giggling to myself um, about uh, the, the courage 
of Dominicans to wade right into the difficult issues. You know, first of all, with a little girl and um, almost, you know, confronting her bishop uh, over very gently, but confronting her, her bishop over things. You know, how Dominican is that to uh, just walk right into the challenging uh, situation and to be bold and to face it gently and lovingly? Um, and the other video as well, and wonderful acting, very good actress. So it uh, made me smile that as Dominicans, we're willing to walk into the difficult territory. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sister Diana. And uh, regards Sophia, she could also be a future St. Catherine of Siena, right? Because <laughs> uh, right at her young age, she, she's already confronting her bishop. And, <laughs> and Irene, <laughs> Uh, yes, it's, it might be a mind-blowing uh, video, and uh, she uh, gives a perfect image of what could have been happening with other people to whom we should preach during this pandemic, because as we all know, we're all away from one another, and we really need to support one another. Thank you so much, sister. Other hands, and we have greetings from friends. Bonjour, Father Emmanuel. So, Brother Emmanuel Dumont. Greetings from the Dominicans in St. Louis, Missouri, USA. Okay. We also have greetings from Benicia, California, St. Dom Dominican or St. Monica's chapter. Okay. Okay. Uh, shall we? There's another one raising her hand. Let's entertain this last one. We have uh, Bithea Kitty OP. Hello, sister. Uh, sister, you may can you please unmute your microphone so that we could all hear? Okay. okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. I, I thought the um videos that the brother had made on the mental conditions uh, schizophrenia and uh, were very on mark uh, because that's the subject that people a lot won't talk about um, and people still see it as a stigma um, and it's just another um, disease or medical problem they have um, so that was very um, on point i think and very good to bring those to our attention thank you Thank you so much, sister. Again, let's give a warm round of applause to our sharers and to the videos shared to us. And we are very glad that our fa father master is available for a few minutes of interaction. We may use the raise hand function of Zoom to be recognized. And please wait for my cue and recognition before you unmute your microphone, okay? So thank you so much. Good evening from the Philippines, Father. Good evening. Uh, good evening, good morning, good afternoon. Good morning, <laughs> Sorry for coming in late. We were on the road from Caleruega to Lerma. I am now here in the monastery. <laughs> we're so excited Lerma. to see you. Yeah. So Sorry for coming in late. Forgive me. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, we'll be waiting for some... Uh, of our participants to ask person, uh, some of their uh, questions. And of course, they have uh, listened to your keynote address earlier. Yeah. yeah. Uh, before that, I would like also to thank, again, the organizers whom I have already thanked uh, in, the, in the address. Uh, but I would like to thank you also, dear sisters and brothers, for taking time uh, to be together uh, for this uh, meeting organized by our institutes of preachings uh, coming from three continents. So thank you so much. Uh, we have discovered a possibility to be together, even if we will not, you know, fly and pass through x-ray <laughs> machines. Now we are together. So yes. So thank you once again. Again, for those who would like to raise their questions, please use the raise hand button of Zoom and wait.
to be acknowledged. We have uh, from Sister Bethea, Kitty. Good evening. As you are the um, Master General and you get to see the whole picture around the world, what do you see as the largest crisis for preaching in our day? Uh, I, I, I think it's the, I, I might have mentioned that or perhaps I did not. Uh, the charism that was given to Dominic is the charism of preaching. And any charism is really a gift by the Holy Spirit for the building up of the church, the body of Christ. But many of the baptized members of the body of Christ forget that we all share in the same charism of, of preaching. In fact, what Dominic did was to champion it, to, to highlight the fact that it is a charism uh, for all the baptized. In, in, in the same way that a congregation, for instance, uh, whose charism is the education of the young, they are actually highlighting the fact that, that the church is, is, is teacher, that the church is mater et magistra, mother and teacher, that the prophetic ministry that we have all embraced when we were baptized is really very much part of our duty to, to teach. In other words, uh, the charism that a congregation receives is a gift for the building up of the church, but it is not limited or exclusive to that congregation. So the first, the first uh, challenge for me is the lack of recognition that we are all preachers. As baptized and as Dominicans, we are especially more so. And in the letter of Pope Francis that he gave to the order last May 24, the feast of the translation of Saint Dominic, he, he highlighted that that the charism of Dominic, that the charism that Dominic received overflowed to all the branches of the family, and which really opened hopefully the mind of the church to the manifold or various forms of preaching uh, there is in the world. Like the writings of Catherine of Siena is a form of preaching. The works of art of Beato Angelico is a work of preaching. The works of charity of Martin de Porres, Rosa de Lima, and uh, our newest saint, Margaret of the city of Castello, these are all very, elo these are all eloquent forms of preaching. Yes. I, I, I hope I, I have answered that. that. That is for me, uh, you know, uh, what I have personally seen in, in, the, in, in these last two years. Uh, of course, I cannot say that I have seen much of the order except through screens like this screen that we have before us, because traveling is really very difficult uh, these days, yes. Thank you so much, Father. We have one question which was sent through direct message. Shall I read it? May I call on Hermi Villasenor? Or shall I, should you be the one to uh, uh, present it to the master. So I think uh, I better read it. So Father, uh, how do you see the role of laity in the ministry of preaching? That's what, uh, that is one of the questions here in our chat box. Okay, uh, I, I more or less, I have answered that in the previous uh, answer that all the baptized, okay, we have embraced that charism of preaching because, you know, we share in the ministries of Jesus as, as prophet, as teacher. So that, that is really part uh, of who, who we are. Uh, and especially now, uh, Pope Francis has 
instituted a new ministry, uh, the ministry of catechists, which is really a ministry of teaching and of preaching. Uh, and of course, we all know very well as Dominicans that Dominic preached verbis et exemplo, by word and example. And in our days, preaching by example is really more eloquent. Let me give you uh, one example. Uh, some people are asking me, what are the Dominicans doing, for instance, about Laudato Si? Uh, I have seen a work by a brother, Zamudio, in Benin, and this is the project Songhai. And this is a project that he launched even before Laudato Si. But every principle of Laudato Si you find in there, <laughs> from the care of the environment to the care of you know, our brothers and sisters, human beings, uh, etc. And if you have time, I can put uh, the, the website perhaps on the chat. And if you are yeah, free, you can look it up. In other words, that is a form of preaching that is by a friar that is not from the pulpit but involves also so many lay people highlighting the importance of the ecology and of providing enough food and sustenance to, 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 to people, especially in places uh, that are not as well off as in other places. Thank you so much, Father. We have a question from Connie Kosh. Hope you, I pronounce your name right. Hello. Yes. Hello, sister. Very good. I, I'm Con Sister Connie Katch, a Dominican Sister of Hope uh, in New York. And I very much appreciated your keynote address, uh, particularly um, how you challenged us um, to become more hope-filled. And you said that preaching truth and hope in the midst of lies uh, and fake news and despair is something that we all uh, identify with and have experienced and continue to experience in our world. But you also said that faith meets reason as companions of truth. And I believe that you are calling us um, to what we are attempting to do, and that is to call forward dialogue. Because faith meets reason when we can, in fact, pray and talk about it rather than argue or ignore one another. So thank you so much for your beautiful presentation. Thank you, sister. Okay, we acknowledge also, I thank you first to sister Connie and we acknowledge the Dominican Sisters of Pompeii in Manila because I think everybody's there in their convent right now <laughs> watching. Hello, hello sister. It's the whole community. Okay, we have a question from Jan Richmond Tiang. Shall I be the one to present it, the brother, or shall I, or shall you be the one? A direct message. Hey, so uh, how do you see, okay, this is to you, Father, how do you see our being a preaching church complement our being a listening church? Okay. Uh, I, 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 I think our model, of course, is, is Dominic, who is a man of, of dialogue. Uh, and of course, he is also a man who listened as much as he talked. Uh, and we, we cannot really preach if we do not listen. And the first listening that we need to do is to listen to the word of God. And Dominic did that uh, in prayer. So we all know that Dominic uh, either spoke with God in prayer or spoke about God in preaching. But speaking about God in preaching doesn't only mean that you know, he did it as though it's, it's a monologue. We are all aware of you know, that story in the inn in Toulouse 
when he had a dialogue with the innkeeper all night long. It would not last that long if all Dominic did was to talk. He also listened. And Dominic is telling us something that we need to listen to, 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 to people who do not share our beliefs. We need to learn from them so that we might become if more effective in conveying to them, in sharing with them uh, the good news uh, of the gospel. And if we do not pay attention, if we do not listen, then we risk, you know, just doing a, a monologue that is ineffective. Uh, so listening is really very much part of, of, of preaching. Uh, in Calaruega, we visited the, the monastery and the youngest sister in the community wrote a book, a very interesting book. Uh, the title is, well, let me translate it poorly in English. It's uh, between silence and word, entre palabra y silencio, between silence and word, because that is really the place where a preacher dwells, between silence and word. Uh, but I would like to go back to what I said earlier. I think it is very much, it is very important to listen to the word of God. A lot of times, many people uh, tell us that they are speaking in the name of God when in fact they have never listened to God in prayer. They are actually speaking their words. Uh, that might sound like judgmental, but what I'm trying to say is we can only speak rightly if we listen or heard correctly. In other words, we can only speak about God correctly if we really try our best to listen to his word. Uh, I had this experience in the Philippines many years ago. A foundation gave hearing aids to the deaf. Many of these deaf were children, and I was asking a doctor uh, from our university, and I asked him, doctor, how come there are so many, how come these children are deaf? Were they born like that? And he told me, no, they had mumps and they were not given the proper care. So something went wrong with their hearing and because of that, they could not speak. It's very interesting for me to learn that yes, it is true, we cannot speak if we are unable to hear because there is no sound that we could even imitate. So nothing was wrong with the tongues of these children who are deaf. They are not really mute. They could not speak because they could not hear. And the moment they were fitted with a hearing aid, I, I, I saw them as though electrified because they entered the world of sound for the very first time. And then they started imitating sounds. We can speak only if we listen and we can speak correctly and rightly if we listen to the voice of God correctly, the voice in scriptures, the voice that we encounter in prayer. Thank you so much, Father. Also have uh, another question. Uh, what do you think is a truth of our faith that has been twisted most in our world today? And how do you want us to defend that truth? Uh -huh. Aha. <laughs> so is, is, is it a the, the, the first, okay. <laughs> okay, I, 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 let me put it this way. Uh, the first truth is the one that we find in the prayer that Jesus taught us, our Father. And that is the truth of the hour, meaning we are all God's children. We are all God's children. And in our world still, you know, uh, people speak as though they are the only children of God there is. Uh, if we truly believe that we are all God's children, that we are all brothers and sisters, then we should uh, treat one another accordingly. Although I realize too that treat looking at the other as a brother or a sister is not enough. 
That is the message of Fratelli Tutti. It's not enough. Why? We all know that the first crime committed in the scripture is by a brother killing another brother. We all know that the first identity theft we find in scripture is Jacob stealing the identity of his brother Esau. And we all know that the first human trafficking recorded in the scripture is, you know, the brothers of Joseph selling him to merchants on the way to Egypt. So treat looking at the other as a brother or sister probably is not enough, but that is an important lesson that we have overlooked. And then, of course, the next important thing is, well, what Jesus told us, that whatever we did, to our brothers or sisters, we, we do it unto the Lord. And a lot of times, I think we just overlook that or disregard that. But I might be wrong. There might be other things. Of course, that depends on that depends from context to context, from region to region, from country to country, from local church to another local church. Thank you so much, Father. Maybe I would also like to grab an opportunity to this reflect with you because you mentioned uh, in your preaching a while ago that St. Dominic is the preacher of grace is also showing us. It's like before even uh, the Misericordia Vultus was written, it was uh, showing us the face of the Father's mercy, which is Jesus Christ, because right now I am part of a of a youth group in the Dominican student date Mokhaad, so it uh, rings so much, uh, it rings a bell so much that Moka for uh, those who are Filipino speakers, Moka means face. Then we use the word Ad, which is anak ng Dios, so it's like the face of Christ, which is uh, supposed to be formed in among the youth. And right now, the challenge so far, we notice that even during the time of the pandemic, we're so exposed to technology. We're also having this, yes, we hear of physical and social distancing, but even emotional and spiritual distancing becomes a challenge, especially for those young people whom we are supposed to be catechizing right now. Uh, if everyone knows the situation in the Philippines, we're still in an alarming pandemic crisis. Yun po. So uh, to bring Christ to the youth and even form them to become one, uh, to become like him, is uh, one of the challenges that we are facing as, a, uh, as formators in, a, in an apostolic group. Thank you so much, Father. <laughs> oh, uh, I forgot when we said our Father, the, the order, and not just the Dominicans, but also the Franciscans. Now we call one another as brothers. Oh, yes. <laughs> we are friars. Thank you so much. Because sir. that is what we are trying to highlight, our relationship uh, with one another. We are really brothers and sisters. I realize that in the Anglophone world, yes, it sounds strange to call a priest brother. But in the Francophone world, in the Hispanophone world, they call themselves frere or fry, I think, which is very much close to that moment in the life of Dominic when he said, from now on, you must call me brother Dominic. So I, I, I think that is also one lesson that the order has to teach uh, the world by, you know, calling attention to our identity. For the sisters who are here, uh, you know, we, we friars, even in the Anglophone world, when we write official documents, we address like assignation letters, for instance, no? In, in a letter of assignation, the provincial calls himself brother. <laughs> or in the, when, when a brother makes profession, he addresses the provincial as, as brother, not as father. So I, I think uh, it, it, it's good to, to, to rethink that, uh, especially in the Anglophone world. It, it was difficult for me 
uh, to, to do that. I remember when Brother Bruno visited the Philippines when I was provincial, he told me, oh, Brother Gerard, please do not call me Father Bruno, bro Brother Bruno. And, I, and my instinctive response was, yes, Father, I will do that. So it was really very difficult to unlearn that <laughs> because it has become ingrained uh, in our culture. But little by little, I think we can. Or if not, you use fry. <laughs> and then when people ask why fry, well, that means brother, friar. Sorry, I spoke too much. <laughs> Thank you so much, brother, brother Jert. Uh, before we end, uh, uh, we would like to acknowledge uh, the one of the directors of the videos we watch. So here's a message from him. Uh, hello, brothers and sisters. I am brother Jude Mary O. OP, director of Dominican Media, Nigeria, and Ghana. I'm also the director of the short film, Wake. I'm sorry I cannot join the discussion via Zoom at this moment. Please bear with me. Our idea was to call attention to people suffering in silence. The fact that we need to pay more attention to such persons and reach out to them, even as we go about our busy lives of preaching. To those who come to us. Thank you so much for the opportunity to have it shown on this platform. Jude Marie Owo, OP Director, Dominican Media. So thank you so much for sharing your time and talent. And again, we thank everyone for your active participation, more so on behalf of the Urbi et Orbi Organizing Committee. Allow me to send our appreciation and thanks to our Master of the Order. So a warm round of applause. Thank you, maraming salamat po, Brother Jert. You are truly an inspiration for all of us. Thank you so much, dear brothers and sisters. Thank you so much, brother. At this point, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, I would like to call on to share his experiences on our topic, Urbi et Orbi, Dominican preaching in the time of pandemic. Is there... Okay, I'm very sorry. I was... Uh, just... Father, uh, sorry, brother, <laughs> brother George, uh, unless you would like to accommodate more people to at least uh, ask one more question, or would you like to ask uh, us questions? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, no, I just, just, I would just like to, you know, to, to say thanks to you, dear brothers and sisters, once again, uh, for taking time to be together and also in the coming days uh, of this conference that we are doing via Zoom. I know it's a challenge to accommodate people from different continents. In some places it's evening or late evening. In some places it's early morning, but thank you so much for taking time. Now I have to go to the nuns of Lerma who are waiting outside because I'm here in their parlor, uh, you know, yeah, stealing some time. Yes. Sorry, my schedule was not really well organized uh, in, in this sense, but forgive me for, for doing this. But thank you so much, dear brothers and sisters. Thank you so much. And please stay safe. And a blessed feast of our Holy Father, St. Dominic. Uh, I prayed especially for the Dominican family when we were there in Caleruega. Because Caleruega is important to us Dominicans as Nazareth and, Jer and Bethlehem are important for all of us Christians. It's the cradle of St. Dominic. We visited also the monks of Santo Domingo de Silos uh, who revere very much Juana de Asa and the other Domingo named after Domingo de Silos and that is Domingo de Caleruega. So please know that you are also in my prayers and we continue to pray for one another. Thank you, dear sisters and brothers. Thank you so much, Brother Jert.
Timoner. Okay, so while while Brother Jerk would be entertaining the nuns who had visited, this day is not yet over as we have something to offer for you. So this time let us watch two preaching presentations entitled Nuns and Nuns and Preaching Through Art. I'm Gina Soliberto, and I work for the Dominican Sisters of Hope in Ossining, New York, in the U.S. I also co-facilitate a group called Nuns and Nuns, which is an intergenerational community dedicated to spiritual listening and learning. It's specifically made up of Catholic sisters and millennial seekers, and we gather in a variety of ways. So our New York City chapter started in 2019, and we hosted three in-person retreats at the Center at Mariondale, in addition to retreats elsewhere in New York. With the start of the pandemic, we were no longer able to meet in person. So we took to Zoom, just like the rest of the world. We had weekly gatherings on Zoom. We had book clubs. We had a pen pal program where people could write snail mail to one another. And we just had our first in-person gathering again in the, the summer of 2021. Um, I'd like to tell you a little bit more about Nuns and Nuns. It's an intergenerational spiritual community dedicated to care, contemplation, and courageous action in service of life and liberation. And I'd say specifically, we connect on themes of community, justice, and spirituality. These are young people looking for these elements in their own lives and learning from how the sisters have lived and what the sisters can offer at this time. The sisters in turn learn about activism and new ways of being in the world from the millennials who journey alongside them. It's a time of spiritual listening and learning reciprocally from both sides. Nuns and Nuns includes the Dominican Sisters of Hope in New York, but we include all communities of Catholic sisters, including other Dominicans and others as well. And Nuns and Nuns is throughout the United States both in the form of a national team and in the form of smaller local communities. As the Dominican Sisters of Hope prepared for their 2021 assembly, they invited some members of Nuns and Nuns to be on a panel. They were interested in the millennials perspective, especially on how hope is alive in today's world and how they see it continuing to be alive into the future. The two millennials are Lauren Lefty and Ellie Hutchison Cervantes, and I'd like to share their responses with you now. Thank you so much. Okay, well, welcome Ellie and Lauren, and thank you both so much for being with us. Um, for those who haven't met Ellie and Lauren in person or virtually, they are both members of New York City Nuns and Nuns. Um, they have been with us since we were doing in-person retreats at Mariondale in 2019. So it's felt like a journey and it's felt like we've, yeah, we've come a long way together. Um, so both have been to the center in person and both have also been with us mostly weekly online. Um, a little bit of background about them. Ellie is a Master of Divinity student at Union Theological Seminary in New York City. And Lauren is a historian of education at NYU, and she's active in educational justice, also in New York City. So thank you both again for being here. So as we've talked about, um, the sisters are really interested in just what is theirs to do now? What do you see as the needs of the world in this moment? And how do you see the Dominican Sisters of Hope as you've known them and journeyed with them as kind of stepping into those needs and addressing them? Um, so I'm gonna let you speak to that. Great, well, I can start us off. Thank you so much, Gina, um, for inviting me to speak and answer this question. And hello to everybody who's joining and watching. Um, and, and thank you for, for the ability to kind of think about this. So I would say as a community of sisters and seekers and nuns and nuns, we've really been doing a lot of imagining um, about what type of world we wanna see on the other side of the pandemic, right? In the past year, year and a half, um, 
We've talked about not just going back to normal because that normal wasn't necessarily serving everyone in our earth equitably and sustainably, but we've talked about creating new forms of community on the other side of this global crisis that we've really all been through. Um, so I, I see the Dominican Sisters of Hope as being in a prime place to kind of continue to live out and provide models of, of a life of action and contemplation that we've been really dreaming up and talking about together. Um, and that our post pandemic world, I think, really needs right now and a lot of people are craving for those types of models and spaces of conversation. And so I see the sisters filling that unique role um, for many reasons, but really in my experience, they've been this community that I see rooted in commitment and tradition, right, within um, a centuries old institution, but also one that really responds to the needs and spirit of the moment and are open to growth and change as as individuals and as a community. And so I think it's really that balance between rootedness and change that I think we need, um, you know, as we learn from the past, but also as we chart a new, new course forward. Um, and I know that the sisters that I really had the privilege of getting to know in Nuns and Nuns are models of that ethos. They are women who share wisdom and guidance with us younger folks, um, wisdom gleaned from impressive lives of faith and service, and many are still very active. It, right? Um, but they also share with us how they're continuing to grow and learn at a later stage in life. I'm um, really open about that process. And they're open to hearing what young people have to say about things like climate and racial and gender justice, um, for example. So the sisters, I think, have really provided this intergenerational space of learning and growth and mutual flourishing um, that I know I find so beautiful. And that could really be a model for the world going forward. And so the sisters to me um, are in this great position to be bridge builders in our society at large um, between generations, certainly as they do in nuns and nuns, uh, but also between many axes of difference, whether that be religious difference, um, you know, racial, political, et cetera, right? Um, so they are and can continue to be wisdom bearers and exemplars of lives lived in that balance between firm conviction and humble openness, really all in the service of justice. And, and I've seen that with the sisters, again, that I've really had the privilege of meeting. Um, and I see the spirit of the Dominican sisters being passed to a younger generation in our group, in our space, you know, even if we're not taking the, the same types of vows ourselves, I think there's still sort of a, a torch being passed. Mm -hmm. And so for that, I know I'm extremely grateful to be part of this community, to have um, learned from the Dominican Sisters of Hope. But I also think in this uniquely challenging moment, um, the world is really listening to prophetic voices and, and wanting spaces like what we've carved out. And the Dominican sisters are, are right there to kind of provide models and conversation. And like I, I said, kind of wisdom for, for the next generations. Thanks, Lauren. That was so beautifully said. Ellie, I wanna invite you to share thoughts. Yeah, thank you, Lauren. Even what you shared now just sparked so many new insights, and I really resonate with what you shared. Um, as I think about the world in this moment, I, I too think about imagination and the critical role that imagination plays in dreaming of better ways of being together um, in community and as individuals. Um, and I see the gift of the Dominican Sisters of Hope as sharing that spiritual environment to be able to dream bigger and to, to think longer term and kind of get out of sometimes the urgency of the now, um, to step out of that urgent space of action, um, take a deep breath, pause, and, um, and just really consider who we want to be together right now and, and what this moment is calling us towards. Um, also, it's, I mean, we all know there are so many issues that need to be addressed. And I think this moment is really calling for urgent radical action. Um, and I, I would encourage the sisters, they're rooted in so many different places across the country, um, in Puerto Rico, I believe, and you have those relationships. And so how can you be listening to the voices in your community and working together um, in radical action towards justice? Um, I think those relationships of mutuality and solidarity are so critical in this moment. And 
I've really experienced that in nuns and nuns. And I think um, those relationships can be modeled in other places and in service of the justice and flourishing. I know the sisters and, and us as millennials that we too desire. Um, I, I also see a need for recognizing the interconnectedness of social issues. Um, so many forms of oppression and what we call evil and powers and principalities, they're interconnected and interwoven. And so I think our solutions need to be multifaceted and integrated as well. And so using the intellect the sisters have, the wisdom of their lives of service um, to dream of what those solutions might look like and how they can implement them on local levels in their neighborhoods and in their communities, um, or simply offer a listening ear and a guiding hand to the people who are on the ground doing that work. Um, I also think like Lauren was saying, um, the need for, for community is huge in this moment. There's so much isolation and, um, and suffering and to be able to address these, these global issues that can feel very overwhelming. We need relationships and we need support to encourage us to keep going. Um, and in these communities like nuns and nuns, we can practice new ways of being and relating to each other. We can not only nourish our spirits and come together and build those relational ties, um, but we can bring those learnings and those ways of being out into the world and show that it's possible to be together as people differently. Um, and that's something the sisters have really taught me um, and which I feel so grateful for. Um, so there, there's so much more to say, but I just wanna express my gratitude to the Dominican Sisters of Hope um, for being a blessing to my life and um, for being in relationship and nuns and nuns. Um, and I, I think you have so much wisdom um, to offer this next generation that we really need to hear from you. We need to learn from your experiences and take those learnings into our work and our lives in the world as we work to address some of these global issues. Thank you both so much. You both did such a wonderful job. Thank you, Ellie and Lauren. And thank you all for listening to this segment. We're so thrilled to share this model of intergenerational learning and preaching during the pandemic with you. What does light do? It reveals what is there. Imagine yourself in the emptiness and silence when God's love sweeps over you and reveals that you are the beloved of God, made in God's image, and so we are impelled to create. The arts are light and darkness, revealing the expanding relationship of God and creation through all of you and me. They are a holy preaching. Most times we think of pulpit preaching, but it is not the only form of preaching. We preach by what we buy and recycle, by how we treat the earth, our driving habits, our service to others, and the ministry of presence to others especially at the pulpit of the water fountain and social media, using our words to approach sensitive conversations, all are examples of preaching individually and communally. Preaching through the arts is more than viewing a gallery or going to a ballet, a concert, or celebrating the fine arts. Often, we listen to preaching from the head up.
preaching through the arts is about a means of bringing God into our senses, our whole bodies, and so our very selves. The idea that my art has a purpose beyond just beauty or inspiration with the idea of preaching and, and proclaiming the word, that's awesome. In each of us, preaching through the arts comes from our depths, be it in writing, painting, sculptures, songs, home decor, table settings, movie, drama, or YouTubes. Stare at a blank canvas or a piece of paper. Listen to a single note. Remember, it took millions of years for a single atom or quark to hold together. God knew creating takes time, patience, and a willingness to see things differently. One thing for sure, God didn't like to be bored. God loves diversity. Art as preaching has its risks. As artists, we begin again and again, knowing that failure is always a real possibility, unless we are willing to let go of what is for what might be. Art as preaching involves the integration of contemplation and work between media, God, and the person. Colors, movement, sounds, preach to the preacher and affect the outcome. Art is a dialogic process with God and the media used. One color or sound can affect the use of another and the result changes. A lump in the clay or knot in the wood can change a sculpture's design. Preaching through the arts can be active, doing the art, or contemplative viewing a completed piece and listening for its preaching. This painting is not about a cup and saucer. This cup and saucer is about painting. How pigment on canvas, composition, perspective, color and shadow transmute into a quest for white. I see this woman everywhere. I feel her yearning, longing, hope strong as steel. When she sees Christ, sees him looking at her, it is more than joy in her face. It is hope fulfilled. She only saw it from the corner of her eyes till now. And now her colors are precious scraps of a life well lived. Fra Angelico, the angelic doctor, is an example of the Dominican tradition of preaching through the arts. His works in San Marco have often been used in meditation. There are many ways in which Dominican artists preach. Just look at the gallery of the Dominican Institute of the Arts. They weave and paint using oils, watercolors, and acrylics. They do pottery and sculpt. They are poets, filmmakers, and so much more. Take a look for yourself. Sometimes what we regard as impact of our art is not always what others see. I might think a piece of art I've created is worthless, but I need to be open, like all artists are, to showing my work to others, to be open to their interpretations, to be open to the impact that it has on other people. Therefore, it's a call for courage, courage to be open to the impact our art has on other people. Visio Divina and Lexio Divina involve reflection using scriptures, artwork, or nature, in contemplation, in response to our very lives. I'm able to share the very depth of who I am with others through my photography. And sometimes 
I don't see in the images I make what other people see. And when other people see things that I have not, it is so humbling. Artists often preach supporting peace and social justice and the vision statements of congregations and organizations. Our reflections on the saints, on history, everyday life, can evoke dramas, movies, recordings and media to engage audiences in a common experience of God reflected in life. Our contemplation can lead us into the creation of sacred spaces and rituals that give us comfort by their simplicity and their beauty. Preaching can take the form of ritual music and deep silence. Like God, don't you become attached to what you create? Why else should it bother us so if what we create is crumbled, smashed, or destroyed? The fact is, each of us creates, and so we are artists. We've made a project or written a paper, took pictures, sang songs, danced. Our world is full of art. There are posters and pictures on our walls. Our clothes have special colors for seasons and moods. Don't you know someone's mood by how they walk, sit, or stand? Art is part of us. It is transformative. After all, how many of us have ever had something turn out exactly as planned? Art can relieve stress, bring forth our unconscious, share with God, why else are today so important painting parties for the fun of it and what they reveal in a community of people together? How else can we create portals of experience of the arts that can reveal more of who we are? To preach through the arts is to praise. It's to live in the mystery, gratefully recognizing that the source of everything is God's love. It is to bless, to recognize and be who we are in the diversity of all that is, nothing more, nothing less. It is to preach. It is to preach to proclaim the word of truth that is known in the boundless mercy and love of God in Christ Jesus and to follow with the arts that can lead us to move, to use sound, to find all sorts of expressions of art wherever that leads. In the Dominican Youth Movement's preaching conferences, we often use Lexio Divina, using scripture and finding it and placing it in a context as well as the context of our world and our own lives. We then use sound and movement. The sound we choose is usually based on the content of the gospel. And there can be two or three simple phrases like mantras. And in this example, we use, I am with you always, and do not be afraid. No 
matter the activity, it is important to have time to reflect on what the activity meant to each of the participants. Movement allows an experience to come inside of us. We can move as simple as feeling your feet rooted like a tree, moving like a blade of grass or an ocean storm. We can move to the scriptures, to music, or do a dance of universal peace. Besides drawing a particular passage, moving to the scripture, or acting out a particular passage, each gives new insight to the participant and is a preaching through the arts. Mandalas, or sacred circle drawings, can enable the participant to see in the depths of themselves what God is saying about a particular experience or their own lives. Our preaching can take many forms, from simple conversations to demonstrations, crying out in words and photography, poems, and written reflections, which indeed proclaim what we believe. Some of our artists lead artist meditation sessions for healing through the expressive arts. We need to be consistent in what we preach because we may be the only Bible a person reads. Preaching is our witness with your life to the heart of the universe the heart of God. The arts enable us to preach together with hearts that overflow with love. Okay, there we have it. Uh, we learn a lot from the video presentations. And of course, we learn from our master, Brother Jerk, on uh, how we shall prepare ourselves to preach God's friendship as we address the greater pandemic, such as the issues of clericalism, fake news, and of course, many more. We also learned from the videos just presented to us about the Dominican sisters' wisdom being passed on to the next generation in the midst of intergenerational space and preaching through the arts that is more than viewing a gallery, but using art as a means of bringing God into our senses, seeing Fra Angelico and other saintly artists, we can say, as our examples. And we thank those who have prepared the video presentations. For, our, for all our participants, please be reminded that the Institute of Preaching has sent you an evaluation form for day one to accomplish. So we are also sending the link in the chat box so you can be directed to the online evaluation form. Be reminded that you will automatically get your certificate of participation in today's event after the evaluation. Should you encounter problems or technical difficulties in either answering the form or receiving our, your e-certificate, please, please send us an email at urbi at orbi 2021 at letran.edu.ph. Again, that is urbi at orbi 2021 at letran.edu.ph. So there you have it for our day one, friends, brothers, and sisters in St. Dominic. As always, we are grateful to have you with us this day. See you tomorrow for the second day of Urbi et Orbi. To end this activity, we shall have our closing prayer.
Thank you.